Hello, viewers. How are you? How is everybody doing? Wow. A long awaited broadcast for me. In the studio today, I have somebody very, very special to me, somebody I really cherish my relationship with him, somebody I've known for how many years? <laughs> 30, 35, years. 35 years of my life. How old am I that I've known somebody for 35 years? Somebody that I've lived more than half of my life with is a man that I really adore his character. I love his patience. I love, you know, anybody that can live with me, they have to be very patient. And I'm not bragging in my weakness. I just acknowledge my weakness and know that i am still a work in progress god is working on me in terms of patience in terms of understanding in terms of a lot of things every viewer join me in welcoming to the studio my crown my head my husband my sugar <laughs> my honey he doesn't like that but all that i ever um, cried on his shoulder <laughs> Coach Adebisi Adenero, you're very welcome, sir. You're welcome for inviting me. Now, I know you're a shy person. <laughs> it's very <laughs> difficult for people to believe as big, masculine looking as he is. He's still shy. Yes, he is a shy guy. He does not like spotlight. He would rather do it behind the scene. But it took me a lot to convince him that I can't talk about parenting every time without the man that helped me to know that we did a good job together. I'm not the only person. Actually, I want to say my husband is very domesticated. He's done a lot of good works with our children. So thank you for being the father that you are. Thank you for being the husband that you are. Thank you for being the priest of your house, for being mentor to a lot of young men i really really love you thank you very much so let's get down to business uh you were asking me this morning <laughs> what am i gonna ask <laughs> and i said to you i don't know i'm gonna get there and i'm gonna ask questions i said oh don't do that tell me what you're gonna <laughs> ask me now so that it can be easy so i gave him tips but i'm gonna go more than the tips it won't he doesn't know that, but let's let's move on. Okay. Um, as a father, you are a father to four biological children, one adopted, and uh, many, many more children. What do you think is the daddy's role in raising godly, good children? Uh, thank you, my wife. Thank you for the invitation, and I'm privileged to be here. Um, to be a dad and also to be a godly dad, number one I know is that um, it's by grace of God that everything that we do to raise a child is not by, I know how to do it. It's because of God's grace and that God gives you the, uh, the willpower. When you get close to God and know God and serve God, he will give you wisdom how to raise your children. Uh, for me, it's just, I believe one thing when I was young, I see my parents also uh, taking us to church. But one thing I know they fail to do that I promise myself that I would surely do it for my children is to give time for my children because time is very, very important nowadays. If they don't give time to your children, it's going to affect them. So you're saying um, daddy's role, one of daddy's role is to create time their for their children thank you well you have answered question number four but <laughs> let's go back to time when you say create time as daddy you have to provide for us we need money we need to survive financially we need a house we need a car we need beautiful things how do we manage that when you've gone to work and still provide time how are we how are daddy supposed to do that when I mean time, I mean that, uh, not that you're not gonna work. I mean, I work, I play soccer, I go all, most of the time. But any little time I have, 
when I know I create the time for myself. It's the same way like you, people say, I don't have time for God. You have to create the time. I create the time. I know this time I'm going to work. After work, I know my children are waiting for me. And I know the time I'm supposed to go out, not to go out, because when they're home and I have nothing to do, I have to give the 100% attention to them. It's not the time I have to start going to a friend's house, go and do something different, because you already have children. They are your best friend. They are the one that you have to do something for. They, have to, they are looking at you. So I still go to work. People go to work, but I have to find a way for me, I mean, for them to be able to be a good dad. Okay. So creating time, although you have to go to work, you still create time for your children. I remember when our children were really, really young. There was a situation that happened. And I know you will remember if I remind you. I was kind of like, don't don't quote me and don't say it after this program. <laughs> okay? For the people that are close to me, don't say it. I was kind of like saying, well, why don't you go get a job uh, somewhere else? Why don't you, so that we can make more money, so that we can live certain life. And I remember you told me something. You said, we can make money, but money cannot raise these children. If you have a job and you are gone all day, I cannot have a job and be gone all day. Can you talk about that? Okay, I remember that perfectly. Uh, I will start from when I was playing professional in Europe and Asia. Remember, I always tell you that, listen, this is not the time for you to get a job. While I'm playing, making the money, you stay with the children. Give them the time. Whatever they need to do, make sure you're there. If you have a part-time job, you can do it, but do not leave them alone. When I start playing and people are saying, uh, you're home and you have to go and get more job to uh, add to what you are making now, but I remember when I said to you, I said, the best thing for me now, I'll find, I go to coaching school, I'll find a job that will tally with my children, school activities that they can grow up together with me. So I decided to do that because not all fathers will have the opportunity to do that. But I decided that what my parents did not give to me, they did not give time to me because uh, at nine, I started working for them to make money in my house. At 16, I'm out of the house. I mean, playing professional, I mean, playing soccer in Nigeria. It will start with my two brothers living with me. So when I get to this age of being a father, I said, no, I will make sure I have to stay with my children to train them in God's way. Because the Bible said, I know Abraham, he will teach his children. If I don't have time, if I always go out there, walk, do all that stuff, which everybody do, we have to do the same. And I did not get that time for them. At the end of the day, if I make all the money, I will not enjoy my children. But that's why I give 100% time to make sure if I'm not there, you are there. If I'm working and there's no time, I make sure. I say, don't work, just stay with the children. We have the children. We have to raise them. And money, not only money, we raise them. It's not only, oh, I buy something, I give you something. But end of the day, it's going to affect the children. It's going to affect you. Thank you, sir. You always tell me that um, when I'm kind of like myself, and saying, I have to take that boy from one end of the town mm -hmm. to another end of the town because this one does not want to play where mm -hmm. this one played, this one like that coach better than that coach. And I, I complained, I'm not going to lie. I complained that it's too tedious, it's too overwhelming. I remember one thing you used to tell me that I go to store and buy beautiful clothes for my children. Because I love my children to look good, especially when they were little. But one day I remember my husband told me, they're going to forget all these clothes. They're not going to remember all this shopping that you're doing for them. As a matter of fact, my daughter, when she grew older, told me that all the clothes that I was buying, that I thought I was, <laughs> that I was spending a lot of hundreds of dollars buying, she said, I make her look like a baby doll or something like that, you know? So, uh, mommy, I didn't really like those clothes, but I couldn't complain, I was a child. Then I went back to what my husband told me then that, see, all those clothes that you were spending your time buying for them, making them look good, they don't appreciate it, but then they will just remember, and this is for parents with younger children, they will just remember one incident that daddy went with them 
30 miles away for skating program. I'm like, to me, that didn't mean anything. Going with them for skating, the one that wanted to do those BMX, one of my children, he would take my husband almost Dallas or San Antonio, and they would go and do BMX. To me, that was a waste of time. But as I grew older as a parent, I realized my children have memories of those times better than the shopping, better than the food, better than the clothing that we bought for them. Thank you so much for helping me do that for my children. Thank if I, you. If I may come in a little bit again, is that um, some uh, parents don't have the opportunity to do that. But there's going to be a way that you have to create time for them. For example, where I see my children like sports because i'm a sportsman they like sports it because easy. it's easy for me and not only sports you're going to see some, some children that like to do music that like to do dancing that like to do or oh, different activities some want to do science project they want to do something but some parents will say oh, i don't have time just go to school uh whatever i do in school is okay i mean god give every children talent if you did not put them into where they have an interest, you will not know the talent God gives to them. Yeah, definitely. What, I mean, most of Nigerians or Africans, or we study, we go to school. They will go to school. But what are the talent God gives to them? How do you know that my son or my daughter will not be the best in basketball, will not be the best in baseball, will not be the best in American football? How do you know if you don't expose them to it? How do you know it's not going to be the best singer? How do you know it's not going to be the best actor? Even pastor. Because uh, after school, when my son, one of my sons said, oh, daddy, I want to be an actor. Oh, Lord. And that's at, <laughs> at age 11. And we look for a program where I can start taking him for audition. We did that. We spent money. He started doing it until he said, okay, I don't want to do it again. <laughs> but guess what? I don't know. That's why I put all my time, my effort, my money to say, okay, whatever you want to do, but don't waste my time. You have to give 100%. And also, I know everybody knows that education comes first. If your education is dropping, your grade is dropping, all the activities are dropping. Because without the education, you can't even do anything. Even playing sports nowadays, if you're not, if you're not in school, you can't play it. So I don't want parents to tell me that it's only school. I find in the 20s we are now, it's not only school. School, number one, but there's going to be other stuff they want to do. Everybody have talent, but do nobody know where God has programmed my daughter or my son to make it in life. So most of the time, I'll see go back to create time, give them the opportunity that your father did not give to you, your mother did not give to you, because back home, the opportunity is not there back home for them to give us that 100% time, because they have to work. They have to make their swings. And most of us come on from uh, parents that don't have enough, so they have to be there 24-7. So how are they going to come and watch your soccer game? I didn't count it against them. So overall, time time is very important for our children, and that's the only way they can give us best uh, results in the education also. Thank you. Thank you very much, Coach. Uh, as we were talking, I remember um, it's bringing back a lot of memories of what you used to say then that didn't really matter much to me because, you know, as a mother in the midst of raising children, and I want to give this to mothers in the midst of raising children, it is very, very overwhelming. I'm going to say the truth. It wasn't like a smooth journey, like, okay, let's, we are raising children and we are rocky dandy. We are fine. It was some days you want to pull out your hair and say, why on earth did I have this amount of children? Sometimes you'll be like, oh, I didn't get the memo on time. I could have stopped on one or I could have stopped on two. But I remember one of the things you used to tell me is that God didn't give us these children so we can just raise them. He gave us these children so they can showcase Christ. How did you contribute to your children's spiritual growth? Maybe about the church they went to or about the pro Christian programs they were involved in, something like that. Okay, first thing I'm going to say, uh, it's not about church. It's not about uh, school. In fact, the church will not train your children for you. 
they just add to it. It started from home. At home, the, when the kids are very little, very young, they're looking at you. First of all, you know, as a parent, the first thing your, your son or daughter notice that you are their first God, the one they can see, the one they relate to it. Then you are the one that introduced your God to them, that I serve God of Abraham, God of Isaac and Jacob. And they see you the way you do it, and they follow your footsteps. That means they start from home. Then when they get to church, they start training them more. But it's not that I'm going to leave my children that, oh, just go, I mean, whenever you want to serve God, to serve God. Hey, nobody will force any child to serve God. But guess what? They take the example from the parents at home. And from there, they start following the God to serve. And right from there, they will know the God to serve and they will do better. Thank you. Uh, I keep reminding so many things. I remember one of our children that liked to dress quote unquote <laughs> in a certain way. Uh, thank God they're grown now. But I remember we, we were attending a particular church and everybody looks proper. You know, everybody is in suits, they are tied, they are buckled up. And each time we say, let's go to church, you'll be like, I don't want to go. Why do we have to wear suits? Why do we have to wear suits? And I would try stylishly to convince him that, oh, it's good to look your best for God. It's good to look your best for God. And one day my husband said, no, if he wants to wear jeans, let him wear jeans. If they don't like children wearing jeans then they're not welcoming my children because i don't want to persuade them to go to church all the time because of clothing what do you have to say for parents facing things like that because i've heard it before my mom is always saying and i'm not saying wear low dress immodest i'm not talking about Im immodest dressing no i'm not saying you should dress like an adult when you are going to church especially girls i'm not saying you should show anything but let's say you just like to wear casual outfit that does not look churchy to church what do you have to say from day one i already know uh when i first started going to church i don't like to wear suit because i'm a sportsman we wear t-shirt i wear jeans i wear it's not suit it's not my stuff at the beginning uh I think my old pastor, Pastor Toya Demola, is one that started saying, oh, when this man is going to start wearing a suit? <laughs> then I said, I'm not a suit man. I mean, I'm, I'm an athlete. I'm a sportsman. I wear t-shirt and shirt. I wear jeans. And then when my kids pick up like that, I remember that's the first thing I started doing as an athlete. So I don't put it on them. When we go to church, they have everybody suit up. I wear suit at that time. But when their mother start complaining, leave them alone, leave them. I say, okay, listen, boy, you have to dress neat. You have to dress nice. Modest. It's not that you just wear sata jeans or I will not like take that. And I give them condition. I'm not that buying the stuff. The mother is buying it. Make sure you buy something that's decent, modest for them. That not anything that you can just wear to church. But I leave them to make their choice. But I lead by example too. Because when I'm going to church, they see daddy dress neat, dress nice. And stylishly, I'll tell them, don't you like the way daddy dress? Or they say, I like it, but this, this, their suit is normal. But okay, wear your t-shirt. Go wear nice jeans and let's go to serve God. Amen. So to parents, again, if your child is always complaining about how he or she has to dress and it is a modest dressing. I remember that time as I was struggling with it, I got an impression in my spirit that it is not a fashion parade center. You're not going there to show how much uh, that time we used to shop Jimbori or Kids a la mode. That's what was in fashion then. That was maybe 30, 20 years ago. And if you have not shopped there, your son or daughter is not looking cute. And one day the Lord ministered to me that you are not going for a fashion parade. If you make these children have an impression that going to church is a fashion parade, then they will grow up to go to church looking to do fashion parade so as parents when you when you are taking your children to church don't give them an impression that you are going to socialize don't give them an impression that you are going for fashion parade don't give them an impression that they will not be welcome if they don't wear certain outfits help them to understand that going to church 
goes with their heart and not what they are wearing. Thank you so much, Coach. I really appreciate that. Number three, we in the community where we live in, we have a lot of issues about absentee fathers. Absentee fathers, not some fathers are actually present in the house. They live in the same house, but they are detached from their children. They, they, they are not connected. But being your wife, I can tell you that you are probably more connected to your children sometimes than I am. There are no things that my children will not tell my husband. Very, very rare. Except mm -hmm. if probably they know they're going to get in trouble, then they'll tell mommy first. So mommy can know how to package it <laughs> and present it to daddy. That's probably the only time they won't tell daddy directly. How do you encourage fathers that are not present let's do that first there was a time you were not in united states there was a time you were gone for like five years you were playing soccer in europe in asia and the children were with me by myself and the holy spirit but i can recollect today that you were still part of raising them because maybe two or three times a week, tell us how you did it, <laughs> that you were still present, although you were not physically present. Then we'll go to the ones that are not physically present, uh, that are physically present, but not emotionally present. Uh, thank you very much. When I was outside playing, uh, the only thing I do for my children is not to miss me a lot, is uh, always, every day, I make a call to them, talk to them, encourage them, tell them daddy is doing, uh, playing soccer, he's making money for you. And one day you're going to enjoy it. I'm going to come and teach you soccer. I make your 99% after my playing or I'm not doing anything. I'm on the phone with my wife, with my children, put them on the phone so we can talk. And anytime I have a chance to come home, I just come and visit them. And from where I am, I always send a gift to them to make sure daddy is on top of the stuff and remembering them. And also, when I talk to them, I pray with them more because I know when she's doing it alone, the only thing I can do is to pray for them. And also, when I pray for them, I let them know. You remember, anything you're going to do, think about what Jesus will do. So when they go to school, and most of the time I call them, I call their school from where I'm playing. That I just want to talk to them. They'll be surprised that I call. I say, yeah, I just want to hear your voice to make sure everything is okay at school. So those are the things I do when I was outside playing. And anytime I have opportunity to come back home, I don't quit to come home. And in fact, because of that, that's why I stopped playing oh, early. No, uh, because yeah, uh, we are going there last. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, don't go to the last part of my question. Mm. Uh, what about daddies that are not even there at all? I mean, they are not connected. They absentee daddies, we call them in America, or missing in action daddies. What do you have to say to them? But on that note, I mean, I don't think I have a lot to say about that because it has not happened to me. <laughs> and also, I will bring it back to you. If, if there's a dad at home that did not take his responsibility at home, first, you have to question the, the mother too. Because uh, if the mother is not doing the right thing she's supposed to do with their dad, the dad will feel like, listen, why should I do anything at home? But that's not right for a dad to do because that's your dad. you have to train your children. But guess what? It takes two. When the two are home, you take the two to you can't do it by yourself when two of you are home. And maybe the mom is always telling, you, Don't talk to my children like that, uh, don't punish them, don't do this to them. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Start defending them. Why the parent, why, why the dad is that there? It's not good. They have to be one voice. When daddy say yes, mommy has to say yes. When mommy say yes, daddy has to say yes. Sometimes my kids want something from me. I say, Go to your mom. And the mom know the answer and they want something for their mom they say I'll go to your dad they get it because we are doing one voice so that's the only thing i can do on that because i'm i'm not being that sure of being absent from my children thank you so much coach god bless you <laughs> i remember uh, an incident just flashed back it's about discipline we are going to discipline in our children now <laughs> One of our children, one of our, one of them happened to 
I think he had an injury at home playing with the sister or something. Mm -hmm. And the next day or a few days later, we got a call from CPS that we needed to appear in CPS court because we were abusing our child because our child showed a mark for one, you know the reason because you <laughs> told that one of my children was a little bit active and daddy went to school and told the child in front of the school teacher and principal, when you get home, you're going to hear it. <laughs> so unfortunately, a few days later, something happened to that boy's neck. Yeah, boy. The boy's neck by the girl. So instead of the teacher to ask the boy what happened, did your daddy beat you? Because he was already scared that daddy was going to whoop him. Instead of that, they called CPS on us. And we went to CPS. We're not going to talk about the story of the CPS because we came out victorious. <laughs> Actually, CPS told us, good job. Beat him up. What do you have to tell Nigerian, African, generally, parents in America that are always afraid CPS is going to come get them? What do you have to say to them? Um, on that note also, uh, when it happens, the teacher called me that uh, my son is misbehaving in class. And I said, okay. When I get to the class, I said, okay. Uh, if the teacher cannot discipline you in school, I will do it when I get home. That's my statement. And after we get home, really, really, I discipline him. But when I'm disciplining my children, I discipline them with love. I will not hurt them. But when the CPS call me, at first, my wife started begging me, don't go and cause trouble there. Because <laughs> first, I said to the school, I said, it's an insult for you calling me for my, for my son. Because if I did not train him, I don't want the downtown to train him for me. That's why I'm a father. And I don't want him to mess up my name, that your son is in jail. Is that I don't want to see that. So that's why I have to do it when they are young, when they are, they are still in elementary school then. Yes. They are still in elementary school. But I make sure I do what I need to do. And when we get to CPS and I explain to them, listen, even before I explain, I say, if you want to take this boy, I can give him to you if you want to. Because you call me because I discipline my, my son. But I say I'm an African, that is an insult because if not my parents discipline me, I will not be here alone and be a good citizen for you. But I'm going to do what I need to do, either you like it or not. But if you want the boy, I can give him to you right now. And they say, no, 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 it's not what we're saying. No. Okay, next time, try not to. When you see this last name, don't call me again. If you call me, it's you are calling me to come and pick the boy. I'll give it to you. So since then, uh, CPS tell me, Listen, we hear the story and we know Africans do that, but please don't be there where there's visible. I said, no, I did not do that. The, the teacher didn't ask me. He just believed that I'm the one that uh, beat him and he asked Mark. And I went back to the school. I said, please, tell this teacher not to send me any note home, sign that my son is bad at school. I will not reply. I will not sign it because I'm trying to help him, but now he's calling CPS for me. Since then, uh, my children know. They know that daddy... Loves them, and when I discipline, I discipline with love. Okay, so you are telling <laughs> that that story was a big memory. Sorry, I had to laugh. So you are telling parents that it's okay to discipline your child. It's very okay, very good because the Bible said it in Proverbs. If you did not use the rod for your children, tomorrow when they start getting trouble, don't blame society, don't blame the church, don't blame this. It starts from your home. You have to discipline them with love, not just discipline anyhow, but with love. But also, that love starts from you because you have to lead example for them before you can say, I love my son or daughter. What you do in front of them and how you behave is very important. Uh, it's not a dad that, oh, you've gone since morning, you are in Houston, and you come home at 11, 12 o'clock, and by the time your son gets to that, he starts coming at 10, 11, we say, oh, you start getting upset. It's not going to work. Or when you're supposed to study your Bible, you did not study your Bible, you're supposed to do your assignment for you did not do it, and you start blaming your son when he's not doing his own work also. So everything starts from what they see from you as a parent, and they meditate from it. Thank you so much, Coach Charlie. Thank you. It's okay to discipline our children. It is whatever age appropriate discipline you want to give to your child make sure you let your child know and you discipline your child another thing 
that I'm going to talk about is that, and my children are on the line right now. Probably they've never watched my <laughs> program <laughs> diligently. They do sometimes, but not as diligent as the way they wanted to watch their father say something. And I'm so proud of them. They really love their dad. I believe they love me too, but... Let me ask something. Uh -huh. um, about discipline also. I know they're online watching this. Uh, I coach Houston Christian High School. And one of my sons go to that Houston Christian High School as a soccer coach, he's a soccer player. And one day I was in the in the lobby and one of the teacher is a in oh, fact is a Bible teacher. He walks up to me, he said, Oh, Coach Adi, my my your son uh said something at class today. I said, What? He said he asked him for the first question I asked my son is that oh, where's your uh medication, medication for HDD? ADHD. ADHD, that you not take any medication, you're not taking everybody always would get, get time to go and take their medication, but only your son don't take a medication. Then he asked my son, say, why are you not taking any medication? I said, oh, <laughs> the, my dad have used whooping to take all this uh, ADHD. ADHD away from me. Say, really, your dad used whooping to take it away? He said, yeah, because my dad, if I mess up, he's going to whoop me. Yeah, then he walked to me and said, is that true? You whoop your, your son? I said, did he tell you that? He said, yes, okay. When he miss, when he misbehave, I'm going to whoop him because that's what my Bible tells me and that's what I believe as an African to do because I whoop him just for him not to repeat the same out thing. Out of love. Out of love. Yes. yes. And uh, as much as whooping works, there's a certain age that whooping will not work. Yes. You know, I can't whoop my first son now. He's taller than me. Even my last baby is way taller than everybody. So I can't say he's misbehaving, I whoop him. If you help, like my pastor's wife always say, help them. If you help a two-year-old with a little young. bit tapping, yeah. But don't wait until they become a grown-up and they can fight you, and then you start whooping them. And let's discipline appropriately. God will help us to raise these children. I want to say something that we are not here as experts in parenting. It is because we love to see children do better. You know, if we have a community that our children are exemplary children all around, it will be pride. It will be pride for us, especially we Africans. It will be pride that we will, we will delight in it. Not that we will be proud, but it will be pride. We will delight in saying, oh, that is sister, so, 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 son, he's doing so well. That is, brother, that is why we do this program, not to show that we are perfect uh, parents, not at all. We are telling you our struggles now, so at least you know we are not perfect parents. God bless you. Another question. Um, I remember we used to live somewhere we had a very big house. We, we were doing exemplary well in that place. Not that we are doing bad now, but that place, we had a lot of friends. I mean, people just show up and we do, every day is a party in our <laughs> house then. Every Sunday, we just have to have a get together, whether we like it or not, because people will show up. What made you decide, and I want you to say it, what made you decide that we should come to this side of the of the world? Let me say. Uh, before I mention that, because you made a, a statement that I need to add a little bit onto that. We are not the perfect parents. We are not doing anything very good. It's only by the grace of God. It's only by the help of God. It's not that uh, we know how to raise a child, uh, raise a children. No, like. As a coach also, all the children that's given to me to coach, they are all my children. And if you leave all my children apart and go to all my players that have played for me, that is still playing now, I take my discipline to my soccer coaching. When I see any kid that's under me, they are all my children. I don't call them player alone. Any children that's under me, they are all my children. Even the one that's passed through me now, already married, have their children as they see communicate with me, but guess what? They see a lot of stuff in me, and I put a lot of stuff in them because I use my children as an example for them, and that's why too they can parents can allow them to come to me because I let them know if you're gonna be my player, 
I want to see you tomorrow to be a CEO of a company. I want to see you tomorrow to be the best. I want to see you tomorrow to, I can relate with you. That's my player. That's why I just want to add to it. It's not just all my children. All the children that God has given to me, either my basic biological children or the one that plays soccer for me, by God's grace, that's the mandate that I have with God, that I will give the best and the best for all the children. And let's go back to why we moved to this area from where we used to live. Where we used to live, uh, we live amongst uh, different people that uh, come to our house every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday. And I see that some of the children there are uh, uh, misbehaving. And when they're misbehaving, definitely your children will pick the habit. And your training you're giving your, your son or your daughter, when they see their friends in the same neighborhood, they will do the same. So uh, when God ministered to me and my wife, they are listening. You need to move from this area to where I'm going to show you. Then one evening, we just get into our car and start driving. When we get to where we are now, <laughs> there's, a, there's a submission before where we are now. There's a big house like where we used to live. And God said, no, you're not staying in a big house. I want you to be in one uh, three-bedroom or four-bedroom, but no upstairs. Because those days, and my house is big, upstairs, I don't know what my children are doing there. I just call them. Hey, you come down, you come down. And they're there with their friends. Not every time I go upstairs. But now, when we get to this house, and I say, my, this is where we're going to, this is where we're going to live. If my wife was say, huh? <laughs> we're going to live here? I said, God said, this is where we're going to live. And all my children asked to stay in a room where I can go to their room, open their door, and see what they're doing. But I thank God for that. And I thank God I can listen to God that sent me to where I am by his grace. This is house that make me to know that God talks, and this is how that makes me to serve God better. And this is how that God, I know that God did really send me here. Because without that, I don't know where my children will be. Because of the attitude they start picking up in that neighborhood until I move down to this area and we can see each other. There's you can't escape me. My door is there, your door is there. So you can't escape me. So I can see. And in fact, there's no lock behind any of my children's door. You can't lock your door behind. I'll be able to come in anytime. So we thank God that God gave me that instruction and I obey and glory be to God for that. Thank you so much. I like you saying about the lock behind the door because because my daughter is a, she became a grown girl. My husband couldn't open the door and go in anymore. But in the middle of the night, he would tell me, go and check on your daughter. I'd be like, baby, I'm sleeping. Go and check on her. Go and you know, 1 a.m., that's the time I like to sleep, 12, 1, 2. But I will still go and check on my daughter because close proximity. So I want to encourage our young parents especially. Don't leave your children upstairs when they are a little bit grown and let them live their lives by themselves. Get them involved in you because even it's worse in this generation because now you two I was, I was meditating today before my church prayer started. I was meditating and I said, you know what? You can go on YouTube and look for how to have sex. Guess what? I picked up my YouTube. I typed. I didn't let it pop up all the way. I just ended. So with all these three, four, five years old, knowing how to use YouTube, they can just hear more uh, sex on TV and the, the ones that can type, type sex, brrr, it shows up. Then when we were raising children, there was no YouTube like this. So let us make it an habit. Be in close proximity with your children. Don't allow any luck behind. You are paying the rent anyway. You are paying the mortgage. So why are they locking the door? Allow them, allow yourself to be able to come in anytime. You can knock, but anytime Allow yourself to be able to come in. But, I'll but, let but, you but, round up because of Instagram. They only give 45 minutes. Okay. So but overall, it's only by God. It's not by power. It's not by mind. It's can only God can help you to do it. You can't do it by muscle. You can't do it because you are big. Because when children <laughs> are getting bigger, getting older, you can't say you're going to whoop them. But the wisdom God has given to you, that's what you're going to use. But let's start early. When your child is one, two, three, four, that's the best time. 
to start discipline and let God help you to do the right. Please, I will say it again. Please have time for your children. Give them the gift that your parents not give to you, which is time, which I know. And live by example. Let them see what dad and mommy are doing. The, the easiest way for this student to learn is by picking what you are doing. The, the, this visual. So please, let it be and let's raise the children for God. They are God's children. They are not aware. We are just a caretaker. And guess what? It's going to ask us, what do you do for the one I give to you? He trusted us. That's why he gave us children. And he will surely ask you about it. Not only the one that God gave to you, only children around you, any children by you, in your church, in your field, anywhere you see any children, they are yours. Like in Nigeria, a village raises children. The time I'm growing up, I don't know about now. Mm -hmm. Because takes it takes a village to raise a children. Thank you. Thank you so much, Coach Adi. Uh, I'm getting so much text. People are saying, no, oh, don't stop, don't stop. So I'm going to put you on the spotlight. Are you going to come back? to i am bumia Daniel's program when you invite me i'll come back okay so i'm inviting you i'll find a date <laughs> i'll find a date and invite you and we'll continue the role of a dad in parenting why because as parents we need daddy to step up and as daddy daddy needs us to step up too some of we ladies we over pamper our children and keep our husbands and tight i thank god i have a husband that i cannot overrule that if he wants to discipline, he will lock the door, he will lock me out and be doing justice, <laughs> be doing justice behind the door. I pray that every one of us that are just raising our children, that are trying to raise our children, that are yet to have children, all my grandchildren and everybody else, the Lord will teach us how to raise them for the glory of God. May we never lack the wisdom to raise these children so that we will have posterity so that our legacy will continue to glorify God. Once again, thank you so much, everybody that tuned in because of Coach Adi. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Please like our page. I am Bumia Deniro. We have an orphanage in Nigeria called BAO Orphanage. We have Praying Mothers Ministry. We have Family Quest TV and I am Bumi Adeniro, and this is Coach Adi Adeniro. He's the only man that encourages me to be who I am. Once again, my husband, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. May your days be long. Amen. You will fulfill destiny. Amen. You will not die young. Amen. You will live to declare the glory of God. Amen. I love you, and I respect you. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Viewers, I love you all. Thank you so much. God bless you.